Hi, I'm Julie Thompson, Executive Director of PAC TV, and I'm so pleased to be able to host this event today, this forum that it was organized by the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce and specifically by Peter Brown. Peter, thank you so much. Today we're going to be joined by a number of legislators and business um, professionals from the town of Pembroke, including uh, Kyle Harney, who is the um, the president of the chamber and we're so glad to see that he is, is recovering from surgery. We do have Representative Bill Keating of the 9th Congressional District of Massachusetts. We have uh, Representative Josh Cutler of uh, the 6th Plymouth District. We have uh, Representative Kathy Lenatra of the 12th Plymouth District. We have Jim Cantwell who is the state director for Senator Markey. We have Lisa Cullity who is a health agent for the town of Pembroke. We have Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons. We have uh, Mike Gamaris from Remax Spectrum. We have Patty Dunnigan from BizCheck Payroll. We have Sue Moran, the newest, the senator that just got elected. Thank you for joining us, Sue. We have Andrew Sullivan of Protect a Wire Company, Sharon McNamara of Boston Connect Real Estate, and Sarah Rizzitano from Hannon and Murphy Insurance. We have a great. Um, uh, group of people and we're going to have a great discussion today and we're going to take it away and start right now. Representative Bill Keating who is from the 9th Congressional District of Massachusetts, thank you for joining us. Representative Keating, if you could just give some advice to the business owners uh, of the town of Pembroke, uh, go ahead, whatever you'd like to talk about. Well thank you Julie and thanks for having me on. Thanks for doing this. Uh, just a couple of things to always keep perspective on health care as it affects our economy because they're, they're connected beyond uh, uh, any kind of definition. So uh, we're, we're all fearful going forward of uh, a second wave. That'll be devastating from a healthcare standpoint, but also economically devastating. So as we open up, uh, it's critical that uh, businesses communicate just what the restrictions are uh, and the limitations are uh, on retail and other activities and how, the, how it will work. Uh, because that kind of communication is necessary and it'll avoid some confrontations and misunderstandings as businesses open up. You know, the things going forward in the healthcare that we still have to work on, we, we need more testing, uh, resources for testing. We need more contact tracing to, to make sure there's a confidence level and to, and to make uh, hot spots not earn to turn into uh, wildfires. Uh, and we have to make sure our hospitals uh, have the capacity because this fall we're hitting a flu season for the regular flu and uh, elective surgery opening up other kind of medical needs as well as the potential of a second wave. So that's critical. Uh, when it comes to some of the things we're doing from a federal level with uh, for small businesses, clearly a lot has centered upon uh, the PPP program, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program. There were pro problems we knew uh, in racing to get it out uh, we dealt with one level of the problems uh, with uh, the CARES Act too, th that act after the CARES Act, and that dealt with uh, make, pushing more money down to local, smaller uh, lending institutions so that the people that didn't have the pre-existing business relationships or the bigger companies that have lawyers and accountants and already have these things in place uh, wouldn't take the lion's share uh, of the monies that are coming. Secondly, uh, the lack of flexibility. And that's that's one of the largest uh, areas of concern I've heard from uh, our businesses in our region. Uh, and we have addressed that uh, on a separate bipartisan piece of legislation that was just signed into law because the PPP program geared in at keeping employees uh, for the eight week period that ended in the end of June. Well, so many of our businesses really start cooking uh, in the summer months and then beyond. And smaller businesses, uh, needed more flexibility. So uh, we passed this bill and it's very important that if people aren't aware of the changes that were just made and, and didn't think they could take advantage of the program, uh, the changes uh, extend that period that would have just been an eight week period to June, uh, 24 more months, basically the end of the calendar year. And secondly, it built in more flexibility so that the strict percentage, the 75% just for payroll is expanded for other needs like mortgage or rent payments, uh, those kind of urgent uh, needs too that we heard the lack of flexibility dealing with. So uh, that's important. Uh, what's really important to Pembroke too is this and to every local government. Uh, and in my district, probably the largest employer is government, uh, as I think is the case in most people's businesses. Uh, the uh, latest act, the HEROES Act that we passed in the House and waiting 
for the Senate to take action on provides desperate needs to uh, states in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, in our instance, uh, and to municipalities. And what that will mean for Pembroke would be $6 million this year, additionally, and $3 million next year. So that's the highlights of what's going on. I hope we have some action uh, on that HEROES Act so that uh, those needed monies will be there. Uh, I think that's important, uh, not just for businesses, but for everyone that's employed uh, at that level, because it's, it's hard to continue businesses uh, going uh, when the alternative could be uh, these communities and the states are gonna be facing bankruptcy. So I gave you an awful lot very quickly. Those are the highlights. Uh, our office is open. People should realize this as a last note. Uh, you know, we move people for healthcare reasons away from our office, but everyone is fully equipped in our offices. So in our Plymouth office, which is the closest regionally, everyone is there. So if you dial the way you had the past with a concern on anything, uh, and we've been flooded with all kinds of concerns, uh, please call us and know that the, we're there to give answers and to help you in, in, in any of the needs you have. That's not been affected by the pandemic. So with that, Julie, I'll turn it back and thank everyone, uh, you know, for and thank you for allowing this opportunity to communicate on these important issues. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was uh, Representative Bill Keating. Uh, we thank you for your time today, and we will put up all the information of how people can get in touch with your office. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, you. I would like to go to uh, Kyle Harney. Now, Kyle Harney is the president of the uh, Pembroke Chamber of Commerce, and Kyle is joining us live from his hospital room. Kyle, welcome. Um, yes, I'm up in uh, Boston right now. I'm at Beth Israel Deaconess uh, getting my, I got my liver transplanted, so um, I'm, that's what I'm up to. Uh, but um, uh, I'm watching everything, you know, from my, the sidelines, kind of. Uh, and um, I hope everyone's uh, safe and healthy. Okay. Um, yeah. What? What did you? Did you have a question for me? I'm, Not I'm yet. Sorry. We're gonna we're gonna go through the whole okay. group and then we'll do Q and A's at the end if that's okay. Okay. Yeah, next, that's perfect. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. I'd like to bring on next Peter Brown, who actually organized all this, who is the uh, president of Tiny and Sons. Welcome, Peter. How are you? What's going on? Well, you know what's going on. <laughs> what's going on with with your so, business? Oh, it's been crazy. Um, we finally were up to three quarters of our employees are back. Uh, we're able to get the PPP loan. And thanks to uh, our federal legislators and local legislators, we were able to continue it. Uh, our biggest issue right now is, is it's been, there's a lot of pent up demand and we're flat out. We're just nuts. So I put an ad in the paper for another technician, um, trying to hire another person for the office. Um, it's been it's been good, but as far as chamber wise, um, as you know, I'm vice chair. I've been trying to support Kyle while he's been out. Um, the restaurants, uh, Lisa Cully's been doing an amazing job keeping us up with the information and stuff. It's just um, people are worried and uh, rightly so of how they're going to survive through the summer and open up for the fall. Um, but as long as we keep getting the help that we're getting and the information we're getting from our state and local, uh, federal, state and local legislators, and um, we should be fine. So good to hear. It's nice to hear that you you have to actually hire people. That's wonderful. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's go now to Josh Cutler, who is the state representative of the Sixth Plymouth District. Josh, welcome. What do you have to say to the the folks in Pembroke, the business folks? Well, welcome. Uh, thank you, Julie and PAC TV. And I just have to say, uh, it's great to see Kyle Harney uh, up and about, uh, or sort of up and about. We're all very uh, pleased to see that. And I want to thank Congressman Keating for taking some time to, to spend some time with us. We really appreciate all the strong work that he and Senator Mark you're doing uh, on behalf of us, uh, all the important stuff that's happening in Washington, D.C. That's really having a real impact and real benefits here on the South Shore and in, in Pembroke. And I see my colleagues, uh, our uh, good friend, uh, Representative Kathy Linacha, represents a neighboring district, and our new senator, uh, Sue Moran, who are very delighted to have on board. And I'm sure there's some other people. I apologize if I can't see everyone. Uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to, just one thing I wanted to mention, and then really kind of let everybody else talk and hopefully have some great questions. Um, people may not be aware, but Pembroke actually recently got, um, was granted a, a small business uh, award of an extra $30,000 from the Attorney General's office uh, just for the town of Pembroke to create a, a small business relief fund. Um, so uh, that is something that is ongoing. It's in the works. 
uh, and we're looking at ways to leverage that money to get even more money to help folks. So that was a nice little piece of news that we got just recently. Uh, so great work from the folks at Pembroke Town Hall for applying for that. Wanted to, to share that news. But again, uh, lots of information about uh, unemployment, uh, PPP loans, um, uh, the CARES Act, happy to talk about all these things. And again, I would just stress that we're here to help and people who need help, whether you're uh, running a small business or maybe you're uh, concerned about your workplace, you know, we all truly are here to help and, and uh, feel free to reach out if we can uh, be of any assistance. So look forward to a, a good show and uh, thanks for again for having us. Thank you very much. We're very pleased to welcome Patty Dunnigan, who is the Vice President of BizChecks Payroll. Patty, I'm sure Thank you're super busy. Thank you for having me. I appreciate busy. it. Go ahead. Tell us we what's are, going on. We are very, very busy. Um, you know, once the COVID thing hit and the amount of reports that our clients needed and the amount of information, and we were guiding them to go this way, go that way, and handle it. And now um, it's it's kind of a, a programming thing that the the systems now have to rewrite a program that they've now written three times about the forgiveness portion of that. So we're actually um, waiting for that to come out, um, the latest program, that we can then just go in and um, grab these reports with date variances and hand them to our clients. And they've got one report to hand off and it's done. So um, we're monitoring it. That's, you know, helping our clients stay on top of this, encouraging them, um, giving them resources to go to. I think that's, you know, that's what we've been spending a lot of our time with. I'd say that things are looking very bright. Um, our clients that were off because of COVID have come back on. Our seasonal clients have all come back or coming back on. I can't say we're at a hundred percent, but we're not, we're not, you know, it's not dismal by any means. And I see a lot of clients hiring people. So um, I, I'd say this, the last three days, I've probably seen 40, 40 employees get hired by clients of ours. So I think there's a bright, a bright outlook from a payroll perspective, which is the, the ground level with the, uh, with the companies. So um, I'd just like to see the, the restaurants get up and running and the retail shops and the hair salons and the nail shops and the massage, but those are the ones that I see that are still in the stalling mode. Um, but construction, um, painting, electricity, plumbing, they're, they're zooming. Um, so that's, that's my perspective I can give you on what's going on. Wow. Very, very busy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And we might have some questions later on. We're very pleased to um, have with us our newest state senator, Susan Moran. Welcome, Sue. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. And, you know, with, with my colleagues, Josh Cutler, Kathy Lenatra. Thank you, Peter, um, for putting this together. You know, and, and this is really such good news um, for some um, you know, some businesses, obviously, and, and to, to have uh, phase one, phase two working and, and things coming back is, is really uh, just, you can feel the buoyancy. At the same time, you know, we're giving a lot of attention to watching the numbers, looking at the testing. Uh, testing um, continues and is available to, to folks as we have seasonal folks come back. That's really important. Uh, the other thing, I don't know if it's been mentioned yet, but um, Plymouth County also has some funds that, um, some COVID funds that can be applied for. They have a website out now. You can take a look at it. For some reason, you, you feel that um, you didn't quite fall into the, you know, the, the box in terms of uh, what's needed. I, you know, Congressman Keating has been terrific in really pushing and extending the requirements so that uh, particularly seasonal businesses fall within, that's that's all incredible. And uh, just, just as my colleagues have said, um, we're here. We have, um, you know, Malika Mullen is, is still the constituent um, representative. We have our office um, close by in Plymouth uh, and just committee work. I've just been appointed uh, to as a, a second seat, vice chair, so to speak, on housing and also a member of uh, economic development and transportation. So we'll be, um, we'll be serving the community most particularly 
in those areas. Um, look forward to, uh, I think, uh, Replanatra has some great things going on here as well. Love to be supportive of, of her. And uh, again, look forward to working with you in our office. And thanks for this forum, uh, Julian Peter. Thank you so much. And speaking of Rep. Lenatra, uh, why don't we hear from Kathy and see if she wants to add anything to what Josh said and what the Senator has said. Welcome, Kathy. Welcome. I just wanted, am I unmuted? Yes, you wanted are. wanted to unmute myself. Yes. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, PAC-TV. Thank you, Peter, and all the members of the chamber for being here today. Um, so phase two, step one in phase two seems to be going um, smoothly. I know there's a lot of, someone had mentioned uh, massage parlors and nails, and that will be step two of phase two. I know that a lot of people are looking forward to that. I have noticed a lot of restaurants in the district that I represent have set up tables outside. And luckily we've had wonderful weather where people have been able to utilize those tables outside. Um, I know people are dying to get out to eat and support our local restaurants and our local businesses. So let's phase two started on time, June 8th. Let, let's hope that everything continues in that succession and we start on time. And it's, it's great to hear some actually optimistic news. I know that the trades are really busy um, around, I think we've all been in our house and noticed everything that's been wrong in our home and decided to do something about it, which is great to keep these people at work. So let's hope that continues with our small businesses and continue to let everyone know that you're going to be open and um, start small, buy local. Great. That's excellent. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to go now to Mike Gamaris, who is the owner um, of Remax Spectrum. Mike, talk to us about your business and how this has drastically affected your, uh, the real estate business. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me. And, and I just want to reiterate, uh, um, you know, the thanks to the local and state governments. Um, as, in times of adversity, it's really easy for folks to um, to be quiet and not, not share uh, updates as much because it's not always great news. But our state and local government officials who are on this call and others have been a, an amazing uh, resource for the local businesses. So thank you for that. Um, it, it was uh, early in the, the stages of coronavirus, our, um, our real estate business was considered essential. So we were still doing business, although we did uh, close our offices for the public um, and scaled back some of our staff's hours. Uh, we were fortunate not to lay anyone off. We have uh, nine employees in our firm. And, um, you know, we continue to, to work through and, and show homes uh, on, a, on a very uh, smaller scale. Uh, we, we had seen probably about a 50% drop in the number of transactions that we normally have at this time of the year in a spring market. Um, over the past few weeks, uh, with things starting to reopen, uh, we've seen a drastic increase in activity, uh, both on the uh, the side of people getting pre-approved for more, and also at the the point where folks are out looking at homes and and trying to um, to see property and buy property. Still have a major issue with inventory. Uh, we're down 57 over a year uh, for homes on the market, which is creating other issues uh, with regards to how um, bid, you know bidding wars are happening and prices are are, um, are, are moving up. But uh, it's definitely a better a better sign uh, that we're seeing activity move around and uh, folks are getting more comfortable with getting back into the market to look for a home. I think, you know, as Kathy mentioned, you know, you, you're in your home for two months. You start to realize you either need more space to support uh, your ability to work from home or other needs. So we're we're seeing clients that are, have reassessed uh, what their their home needs are uh, for the long term and, and has, um, has spurred the amount of activity that we would normally have. So, um, you know, we're, we're optimistic uh, that the rest of this year will um, continue to see strong activity. Uh, we're optimistic that as we get into the end of the year that we won't uh, see a, uh, a, a rebound, but um, we're preparing. And I think that uh, one of the things for us as a company is really to help. It, 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 um, it gave us an opportunity over 60 days to really reassess our business and you know, cut costs and and um, and restructure a little bit on how we did things. So, you know, we're 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 hoping that we're stronger moving forward as well. But, um, but thank you for this forum. This is fantastic. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much, Mike. I'd love to go to Andrew Sullivan. Andrew is the president of uh, Protect a Wire in Pembroke. Andrew, you have an international business. How has this affected you? Yeah, we let's see. We had a really we were cooking before the COVID kicked in. So we were. Early spring, doing great, had a strong backlog, 
and um, we had a bit of a pullback. We actually, um, April, April was okay. I always compare to the previous uh, year, the previous month versus, I mean, we have a budget and a forecast to kind of follow three columns, but um, we're so consistent year after year after doing it for 80 years. It's amazing how consistent monthly sales are from year to year. And uh, so we track it closely. I have a really sharp CFO, Steve Laughlin out of Hanover. That's the brains behind the operation. And um, he's really good with the reports. So April, we did pretty well. May, we had, we had a really big order to Russia and a really, our largest customer worldwide is Russia, um, Igor Petrenko. And, um, our, and we had a big order go to China and they both went out the loading dock at the end of May, which saved the day for the month of May. It would have been a really bad month otherwise, but um, it's left our backlog really shallow going into June here. And we are anticipating um, a below average month. Uh, bookings are down. We think we're probably going to finish the year maybe five, ten percent below last year. It's just a guess at this point, but we do see a lot of strong signs. Our industry is an essential industry, fire protection. All our distributors, we sell through authorized distributors, and they've all been working right through this. We actually closed for a day while we were trying to make sure whether we qualified as essential, and that was a bone of contention in our company, by the way, because we basically sent everybody home and then called them all back and said, you know, we, a lawyer, our corporate attorney said we are essential. In any event, um, we had, we do seminars, training seminars twice a year, and we train 25 students for three days in our conference room. And that 65% of our sales overseas, a lot of them come from overseas for the training. And uh, we had three classes for April and May that we had to cancel. So a lot of people, you know, were booked. We charged uh, for the seats, and um, that was a big loss to us to not get those crews in for training. We've now rescheduled training to September and October, really hoping everybody's going to be able to get back together for that. Um, but we're in it for the long haul. A lot of big international projects we're dealing in the industrial level with uh, Petrochem and PowerGen facilities. Um, these projects don't go away. I think there's, you know, a bit of a pullback, but fire doesn't sleep, right? I, I, that's my slogan. So um, these projects will, you know, they may kick the can down the road a little bit, but we do expect um, strong business going forward. We have a lot of big OEM accounts we're excited about. So some of the new industries for us we're pursuing are uh, photovoltaic PV, uh, solar fields. Are, it's a new emerging market for us and, um, you know, a lot of, you know, the car battery industry as well. But um, I, I'll stop talking. I get a couple points across. I want to thank everybody for putting this together. Peter, thanks for putting this together. It's great to see our representatives and, um, and hearing their side of it. Um, we were thrilled to qualify for PPP. That really did save the day. We didn't lay anybody off, and we have one ad we're putting out there right now. So we're looking to make one hire. We're, you know, 35 employees. We're a small shop. but. Um, we kept everybody on, and um, I wanted to say hi to, to uh, Kyle. So glad to see your smiling face. We were all thinking of you. Um, Kyle, for our CCTF next meeting, I wanted to propose that we have, I want to demonstrate this. I thought you'd enjoy this for uh, starting our next meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> that was Andrew Sullivan. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. And, now, and on that, I'll close. Thank okay. You. Thank you. That was great. Um, I'd like to go to Sarah Rizzitano, who's from Hannon Murphy um, Insurance. Your business never stopped. Everyone continues to need insurance. But how has this affected you? Um, it's been interesting. We have three locations. So we have one in Plymouth, one in Osterville, and then our biggest office here in Pembroke. Um, again, we were essential, so we had to stay open. We had to continue to do business. We were very fortunate in that um, just before sort of the, I guess you'd call it the shutdown on March 23rd, both Jim Hannon and Steve Murphy made the decision to buy a computer for everyone to have at home. So everyone is set up to work remotely if necessary. And we did that for a good amount of time. We went 
completely remote. We had someone coming in to make sure that the mail got delivered and then was scanned to off to each account manager so that people buying cars could still get stamps for the registry. We do have a runner who is taking things up to Wilmington at this point to get things registered for people. Um, and we have most of our staff back in the office. We kind of rearranged some furniture so that everybody's far enough apart. Um, we have, we just opened this week. We kind of just publicized it today to the public again. We have, you know, the requirement that people wear masks when they come in and we're kind of corralling them at the front door so that we can only have one customer in the door at a time. And, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, nobody reuses the same pens, but it's been difficult to make sure that everyone's insurance needs are met and that there's no lag time. Cause I'm sure as you know, many times people want what they want right away. So it's been good. It's been great. We're glad to be back in the office, but again, we are ready to go remote again if we need be and we forwarded calls and it, it worked out well. It worked out better than I actually thought. So we're glad to be back in the office. We all miss sort of seeing each other's faces, even if it's only half a face right now that we can say. So, and thank you again for putting this together, Peter and Julie, and for all the representatives to join in. This was great. This is a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much for your for your words of encouragement too. And it's good to hear different industries and how they're they're dealing with this. Um, I'd like to go. Um, we're going to go to Sharon uh, McNamara. Is she available? Is she also? <laughs> Hi, Sharon. So I'm with Kathleen Keegan. <laughs> so as you can see, we're still working. We actually have a showing. Oh, that's so um, funny. So Go ahead. Yeah. So we're we're all masked up. So um, so things are you know for our business things have been good. I, I asked Peter. You know I wanted to be a part of it more so just to one to thank everybody for you know Peter and everybody on the board for doing everything they're doing for the small businesses. Um, I grew up in Dorchester. My father and mother had a little mom and pop shop. So it's really near and dear to my heart. So more so than talking about Boston Connect Real Estate, I really just wanted to put out there that um, if anybody wants their small their business, whether it's small or large, um, in Pembroke, so I have all those Connect pages. So like Pembroke Connect, I'm out of breath because I'm out of shape, by the way. Thank you, COVID. Um, but if anybody does want to have, if everybody is part of a, um, one of the group members on Pembroke Connect, if you've noticed, I've decided to change out the top header and just make it about the small businesses. I think, uh, Peter, you're up there still, I believe, uh, with Tiny and Sons, and we've been trying to do that like once a week. Um, I've been getting really, really good feedback, um, especially from the restaurants. The restaurants have been you know, private messaging me and saying, hey, you know, free meal on us. And I was like, I, I don't want the free meal. I don't need any more weight. But it's more about just trying to do something little because I think that that's been the stress of COVID is not feeling like you can do enough. So um, if anybody is interested in having their business highlighted on the top, I've basically been taking outside pictures that I'm finding on Google and just putting your contact information up there. Then I'll write a little blurb, you know, basically about your hours and, and things like that. So if anybody is interested in doing that, please just um, send an email to, I just made a new email too for it, uh, just Facebook at bostonconnect.com. Again, it's Facebook at bostonconnect.com. If you could send me an exterior picture, because the Google ones haven't been that great. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to run around and take pictures of everybody's you know, exterior of their property. Um, or if there is a property you want, I think we put um, that bloom in place up there. So we just took like an outside picture of that. Um, and if you want to get any message across, I mean, Pembroke Connect has over 18,000 members. Um, and if anyone is listening from another town by chance, just let me know and I'm, I'm happy to do that and we'll just rotate everybody. That's great. Thank you so much, Sharon. What a wonderful thing to do, helping to highlight the businesses. That's wonderful. We are going to um, talk uh, to Lisa Cullody in a minute um, about the whole restaurants. We, we had invited a number of restaurant owners on today, but this is dinner time and they just started mm. the outside dining, so that's why they probably could not come on with us. So let's go right now, if we can, to... Um, uh, let's go to Jim Cantwell. Now, Jim Cantwell is Senator Markey's state director. Uh, Jim, thank you so much. Welcome. You've heard a little bit of what's going on. What do you have to say? What do you have to say to this group? Julie, first and foremost, thank you very much for the invitation to be here, both yourself and Peter Brown. 
uh, it, just to know and to continue to see how the Pembroke Chamber leads the way of bringing together officials at the local, state, and federal level. Uh, one message that I'd want people to have here is, is just to see how well everyone works together. Uh, just seeing, we really have the state delegation is incredible here in the South Shore. I am a little partial, uh, having worked uh, with both Kathy Lenatra and with Josh Cutler and, and with uh, Senator Moran now. Uh, so pleased to see that Monica Mullen has been a mainstay doing tremendous work all the time. So pleased to see her continuing to do work with you and to make sure that people from Brentburg know when you'll call an official uh, that if the question is at the federal level, state level, local level, we all are going to jump right on it and try to help. A uh, purpose of my being here, I, I'm the state director for Senator Ed Markey. We wanted to hear the stories about what people experienced through the, with the payroll protection program, with the economic uh, disaster loans, and just to make sure that we are properly being able to reflect uh, some of the needs for our Pembroke businesses, businesses that is, and for all the social folks. Uh, so was here largely to listen, but did want to let people know that we heard from you just how our small businesses are the engine of the economy. We had, when uh, COVID first was announced and things were shut down, people immediately were saying we needed this, this life raft. And I'm thrilled to hear the stories today. You know, uh, Andrew, about your success with the payroll protection program. Uh, Peter, about the fact that, that you now are, are, are so busy hiring back, but that the PPP was helpful. Uh, Patty, that you were saying jobs coming back in construction, painting, plumbing, all about. Um, we're thrilled to know the program was successful. And and before just giving my information, I want people to know what an incredible congressman we have uh, with Bill Keating, work, work with his staff, uh, particularly working with Mike Jackman and, and Chris Matthews up here. Uh, but we right now are collaborating on trying to help our seasonal folks, uh, seasonal businesses for the Cape. Uh, Senator Moran, I know you're doing a great deal of work. Uh, but we collaborated in making sure this next round of funds th through the HEROES Act to help businesses, but also very importantly, to try to help our state and local governments that already are, are seeing the signs of lesser revenues and really concerned of, of layoffs. So please know with, with Senator Markey, you have an ally for all the work for the Pembroke Chamber. Uh, our phone number uh, to reach me is 617-565-8519. Uh, or you can call me anytime, 24-7 on my cell, 781-422-40. Actually, that's Josh Cutler's cell phone. I'll leave that off. But, um, but if people want, um, my email is jim underscore cantwell at markey.senate.gov. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to come today to learn from our business leaders. Sharon, I was glad to see you walking. Are you showing off a home as you're doing this call, by the way? So if anyone's looking for a great home, looks like Sharon's uh, doing a great job showing it. And uh, and Kyle, my goodness, Kyle, you are a treasure for the South Shore. We're so glad to know that you're rebounding. You look great and was thrilled to see you all here today. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And I would like to talk to... Lisa Cullody. Now, you, Lisa, you have been deeply involved with all the restaurants that have had to open. Okay, and I know they can't be here. We know why they're not here right now joining us. Yeah. So what, what are some of the challenges that you've heard from them and, and how are you helping them mm -hmm. to overcome them? Sure. The biggest challenge um, for, the, for the restaurant community is, you know, how do you take a, a, a business that's predominantly inside this, most of them are, and suddenly go outside? It, it, it's a challenge. Um, I know a lot of the public is more concerned about the COVID side, and the irony in that is our restaurants are used to dealing with disease and foodborne illness. The, the regulations of COVID are not new to them. The ideas of sanitization and how to do that properly is not unknown to them. What is known, unknown to them is how do I take my indoor business and suddenly move it outdoors? Um, so to that end, there's, a, there's several layers of problems that I want to thank the legislators for taking care of for us. And the first one being how do we suddenly take an alcohol license and make it completely different? So thank you for the legislators that move so quickly to make that happen. Um, and following their lead uh, early on in Pembroke, we said, we're going to have a problem in that how are we going to rewrite the rules under which all these businesses operate and that dozens of them would be looking for it at a time and how do we not hold them up when they're actually allowed to open? So Pembroke, um, the emergency management team known as Pima, um, collectively decided we have to have some sort of a fast track program. It has to be widely accessible. It has to be fast and it has to be instant approval. 
and in conjunction with the planning board, the police department, fire department, building department, board of health, and board of selectmen, we offered a two-day window. It was Monday and Tuesday. That's not to say that someone can't come in and get permitting now, but this was the fast track permitting. Um, restaurant owners and over a dozen, uh, I, I say close to three dozen took advantage of this. Other business owners came in just to get questions answered. Um, but like I said, well over two dozen restaurants came in. Um, it was a simple three page questionnaire. They filled out their questionnaire. If there was anything missing, they got to address it right there with the department that was missing. Um, if there was something that needed to be altered or adjusted, it was done with the approval authority right there on site. And I'm happy to say that going to the board of selectmen, Thank them for their support as well. Tonight is a slate of restaurants that are going to be voted in one, one movement um, with no fees or anything else attached to allow them to set up outdoor table, to, to, to pour outdoors, um, to, to redesign their businesses so they can get up and running. Um, many of them have already had a soft opening. That was done with the blessing of the town, um, you know, friends and family kind of thing, um, to, to work out some kinks. But I know that, like I said, over two dozen uh, restaurants in Pembroke will be open and pouring uh, tonight with wonderful, different, inventive outdoor seating. So I encourage everyone to, to take advantage of that. I, I know I will. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for, the, for that update. And I know we'll be having more. This is um, phase two and phase three, I believe, according to the governor, is could be three weeks from the day phase two started. Is that correct, Lisa? Yeah, that, these are all tentative numbers, but if we continue to track in a positive manner, we could see that. I think we're going to see, so I'm calling it, we're at phase 2.1 right now. We're going to be at 2.2 very shortly, I think. I'm not seeing anything in the numbers that would cause me um, concern, but I'm sure the governor's office is privy to a lot more information than I am. So I would think uh, three to four weeks out from that is when we're going to see phase three come online. Um, remember, phase 2.2 is a lot of those personal services, um, nails and, and things like that, some of the personal services that didn't come back in phase 2.1. And then in phase three, we're going to see a lot more broader ranges of businesses. We're going to see a lot more full capacity retail. We're going to see a lot more um, things turn online, and that could include some interior restaurant seating. I don't think it's going to be 100%. I think there is going to be spacing required. Uh, between tables, I would estimate that number to be somewhere around 25% if what I'm reading is accurate. Um, so, so all of that's going to be coming back online. Um, I, I would, I would expect in the next four weeks, I think we're going to see most of that come back online um, with a lot of precaution changes. You know, the biggest thing for all businesses, remember the big six um, that every business has to comply with. Their cleaning and, and, and sanitization programs, their social distancing programs, and their facial covering uh, requirements. Um, but so far in Pembroke, I'm going to knock on wood, uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of problems. We've seen a whole lot of compliance. A few complaints have come in, but, but nothing to get very excited about. Okay, good to know. Thank you. I'd like to show the whole group, if we can, and we're going um, to go back to any questions that have come up. Uh, you've heard from each other. Does anyone, it just and go by raise of hand, does anyone have a question for someone else on the panel um, based on what you've heard right now today? No questions. What a brilliant group. Okay. Let, go ahead, Lisa. You got to unmute. There we go. Okay, it popped up. So my question is actually for my illustrious mother in the payroll world because people have started to ask me and I'm not sure of the answer. And I know if anyone does know it, she probably does. So a lot of people that have taken advantage of the payroll protection program, and we knew at the outset there was going to be some amount of forgivenesses that were going to go along with that. Rep Cutler was nice enough to share a lot of that information with us. But businesses are asking me now, like, okay, if I took advantage of this, what's going to happen? How do I, how do I show what I did and who I paid? So my question is to her, I would assume any good accountant, but I would assume any good payroll service is going to have those records to, to provide back to the government to say, listen, I paid these people. This is where my PP uh, payroll protection money went to and everything else. But I, I'm just curious about that so that, that I can direct people as they ask me to go back to having that documentation on hand to turn in when and if that becomes necessary. So this is kind of like riding a horse and trying to shoot a gun at a target. That's the best analogy I can give it. Um, I have talked to um, Mike Jackman down at the uh, down at your office, Jim. Um, so as of today, the target has stopped momentarily. So it's a 60% rule that employers um, should be very careful regarding the change to this program as written in the 60% 
must be used on payroll costs or none of the loan will be forgiven. This is a significant change from the prior guidance which provided um, proportional forgiveness. Although the SBA could change the provision, um, employers need to be very aware of this restriction. Um, I think the other thing that people have asked me is, um, I'm trying to hire my employees back and they don't want to come because they're getting unemployment and another $600 and, um, you know, they're afraid they don't want to. So, um, the bill says that, um, provides for additional relief for employers regarding full-time equivalents and wage restoration if the borrower in good faith is able to document an inability to rehire an employee, an individual who was employed on 2-15-2020, inability to hide it, hire an employee with um, similar qualifications, inability to return to the same level of business operations that existed prior to 2-15 due to partial or complete closure of the employer. And that seems to be the biggest complaint, or not complaint, but concern is I have a facial, a, a client who does facials and she's not open. And she said, how can I um, document that I've hired these people back when I can't even be open? Am I supposed to pay them while they're sitting at home? So the answer that we have right now, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, is, because of the extension, the 24 weeks out, they don't have to hire them back now and have them sit at home. They can wait until their business opens because now it's extended the 24 weeks. Correct, Jim? Patty, that's my understanding as well. So um, there's, there's a, I think the biggest fear I hear, Lisa, from small businesses is what if I make a mistake and I end up owing all this money and they, they, they're just afraid. And I keep saying to them, talk to your bank, talk to your bank, and listen to what the, the banks are getting the guidance first because they're your first point of contact with this PPP. Um, and we've been publishing these, these reports that just have, as we know it today, um, it's kind of like, here's the next thing. And that's where we're at with these people. I think it's just um, the, the employers I talk to are just afraid that it's not going to get forgiven, like that's like getting another kick or something, and and that's the biggest fear I'm hearing from everybody. Okay, thank you, um, Patty Dunnigan. Thank you very much. Let's do a let's just go around the group once as a final kind of takeaways for today and advice for the next let's say you know four to six weeks. Josh Cutler, could we start with you from what you've heard today? Sure. Uh, thanks again, Julie. Uh, I wanted to mention two things that kind of came up that we maybe didn't mention. Uh, one is just uh, amplify what our great health agent, Lisa Cullity, was talking about. <laughs> uh, the legislature, uh, um, Lisa and I get to see each other a, a lot virtually lately. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying that picture of the cod, I mean, the, the herring behind her. We have the sacred cod in my, in my uh, desktop and, and the There's herring. There's a story her. about that fish. There's a story there about is. mine too, yeah. <laughs> But no, um, so I want to just mention the legislature recently, pa recently passed the Restaurant Relief Act that uh, I know Representative Lenatra and, and the rest of our delegation uh, helped to, to get through that includes um, some, some help to our restaurant industry because we know that, you know, frankly, that they're hurting and they, they need some assistance, including streamlining outdoor permitting, as Lisa talked about, uh, allowing what we we're calling, for lack of a better term, cocktails to go uh, to create a new revenue stream for our restaurants. Nice. Uh, so that's something that's now in effect. And I just want, I do want to stress because some, some people hear that and they get concerned. Uh, there are safeguards built into that so that, you know, the cocktails have to be sealed and not accessible to the driver and so forth. But it does provide a new revenue stream um, to our restaurants. And also uh, capping third party delivery service fees. We saw that as an issue that some uh, of these Uber Eats types uh, companies were charging fairly exorbitant rates to the restaurants to provide service. And basically held captive. So we've capped those fees just to help the restaurant. So I wanted to mention that. And then finally, um, because it's an issue that comes up a lot, we're seeing a lot of instances of fraud, sadly of unemployment fraud. I know some folks on this call have actually uh, been victims of that. Uh, it's not a data breach that happened at the state level. It's, it's, it's um, folks, it's frankly, it's, an, it's a national scam happening all over the country, getting personal data from elsewhere and then using that to file fraudulent unemployment claims. And so that we're hearing cases of people are getting letters in the mail saying, hey, congratulations, you've gotten approved, and they didn't apply. 
And so there's all kinds of complications that come with that. So we're just telling folks to be very cautious. If you send a letter like that and you didn't apply, don't just throw that away. It could be that you know, you've been the victim of fraud and there's some steps that you, you can take to, uh, to handle that. And certainly feel free to re reach out to your own representative. So I just wanted to mention those two things. Thanks for a great show and thanks to our uh, very esteemed uh, group of panelists. I'm uh, proud to be part of it. Thank you. We're going to keep you all on screen and, and we're going to go now to Kathy Lenatra. Final words of advice and, and from what you've heard today, Kathy? Yes, thanks again, Julie and Peter. Um, I didn't say hello to Kyle. I waved earlier, but it's good to see your face, Kyle. Um, I'm glad Rep Cutler brought up the fraud. That was something I was going to bring up. But other, um, what I also want to bring up is I get a lot of emails from constituents that are concerned about rules right now. It's the early childhood care uh, facilities and as happy as I am to write a letter in their support of what they need, it's also important to know that you can directly go on to mass.gov and if you go through the website, I can share that link with you later, you can actually put your own comments and that goes to the reopening board and I they do read those. So if you are upset with something and you see a, a, you need see you need a change or um, you want to give a comment or a, a complaint or, or actually say something's great, you can go on that link um, and voice your concerns. Awesome. Um, we'd like to go now to Kyle Harney, the president of the uh, chamber. Kyle, what have you well, learned one today? Of the I, one of the things I really want to say um, uh, that has pervaded this uh, uh, show and many others before and everything we do at the chamber and i have to say this is absolutely 100 percent true is the ability to the town of pembroke to want to work with businesses to make sure everyone's happy we're all rowing in the same direction and i couldn't be prouder of that and that's why i love pembroke so very much and would love to get the heck out of here so i could come home and see you all in person again soon i'd like to take in some of those restaurants myself um but uh at the moment i'm still um you know stuck in the big house. But, uh, but I'm very proud to be a uh, uh, part of Pembroke and I'm, um, I'm hoping that we're gonna get through this uh, with uh, pride and, and uh, strength and uh, we'll move from strength to strength. That's great. And we are supporting each other. You can see it all the time. If you follow social media, you can see we're definitely supporting each other, which is great. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Um, You're Andrew, welcome. Andrew I'll, Sullivan. I'll what if, what, do, what is your takeaways from today and maybe advice and what you're gonna do for the next couple of months? Well, I, I mean, I love Pembroke to death, 56 years here in the town of Pembroke. And, uh, you know, the more I look back at, um, you know, just the people that are still, the more I get involved in things in the town, it's great just reconnecting with so many people that have such a love for Pembroke. And I just have such, I think Pembroke has such a bright future. I think there's so many exciting things going on with the businesses. I'm really enjoying being engaged with the Pembroke Chamber. I love hosting after hours, so um, let's get one going soon for get every, you know, I'm a, we can do six feet outside on my patio and now uh, see, <laughs> see how we can get it going. But I'm just excited um, to get through this most of all. And I do feel like we're getting on the other side of it now. Everybody's got to still buckle down and take precautions for sure. And we're doing that to the utmost at our business, but I'm, very thrilled that we're able to stay open and that business continues to come in. So I think the future is very bright. Um, I'd be remiss to not do a plug for my little community center at this point. Um, but I haven't given up hope for the community center. This, I know it has not been a priority, but it's not going away either. And the pandemic will end and the community center will still be standing there barely. So I, um, I know it's been pushed down the road for town meeting a fair amount, but uh, I do think from a business standpoint, and this is the Pembroke Chamber, this is a, a linchpin to bringing businesses to our town to start right in the center of town. And if we can uh, get a good thing going there, we have a great plan in place, really good things will come from that. One plus one equals three in this case. And Josh, I can't thank you enough for the help you've given us to date on that. I, um, we still got a ways to go, but um, that's it for me for today. And uh, thank you all for joining us. So one plus one equals three. That sounds like Jim Cantwell math. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't resist, huh, Josh? Just couldn't resist. Um, Monica Mullen, you are the uh, you work with with uh, Senator Moran. Did you want Did you want to um, say anything? I'm sorry, I didn't bring you sure. in earlier. 
Sure, um, I'm so happy to see everybody. Um, Kyle, you look wonderful. Oh, thank you, nice to see you. So the only thing I really would like to say is that our, our constituent service office and whatever else pops up on our radar at Cordage Park is up and running. And as you imagine, most of what we've been working on for the past three months or that I've been working on as constituent service um, are unemployment claims. And they just keep coming and coming and coming, which, you know, we've had great success with them. I'm, I'm happy to say the Department of Unemployment Assistance has really risen to the task and they've been great to work with. But lately, we're getting a few other um, people come in with other issues, such as housing, such as environmental stuff with uh, fish and wildlife, and also the registry. So I think people's attention is starting to um, move a little bit away from the unemployment and the economic issues to more lifestyle issues. So I, I think that's a great thing. And um, luckily, the state agencies are working mostly from home, I think, but they are responsive and they've been able to help people. So I just want to remind everyone we're here to help. If you know of anyone who needs assistance with the state agency, um, happy to help. So thank you. Thank See you all. Thank you so much, Monica. Sharon McNamara, uh, final words, advice? Go ahead. Yes. Um, so I'm with Mary Baker right now because we're just on a showing. So that's Mary. Um, I guess for me, I just, I have to reiterate with everybody, um, one, and most importantly, it's so great to see Kyle um, out there doing well. So you've been in our thoughts and prayers from everybody at Boston Connect Real Estate. Uh, Kyle, I'm not sure what I was supposed to do with that basket. That's the last time I saw you. So I don't yeah. know if that donation is still going on and what we're supposed to do. No, um, things got doing... pushed off with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, no, no worries. So we'll make sure that we are there for you. Um, but again, I just want to re reiterate that it's just such a pleasure to, you know, have lived in this town for 27 years and just the, the community coming together through the chamber is just wonderful to see. And just trying to just lean into each other, I just think it makes us so much stronger as a community and it will want people to want to be here and live here and move here and people who are moving out of their homes to stay here. So um, I think everybody here has been doing such a great job with that. Um, I want to thank Lisa and Josh as well, because they've been coming on our radio show every Tuesday night for the last, what, 19 weeks, I think. Um, just talking about everything that's going on with COVID and keeping everybody up to date. Um, I was one of the ones when Josh was just talking about that situation. I mentioned it to him last night that I got a letter that my unemployment got accepted and I did not apply for it. Um, so I was one of those people that that happened to. So I'm going to take care of that uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, so just definitely be careful about that. Um, and the other thing is we do do our radio show every Tuesday. So I put it out there for everybody. I just want to, you know, one, if you want to put your banner, if you want to be a banner on Pembroke Connect, I'm happy to do it or whatever other towns that you can think of that have businesses, happy to do that. And we also do the radio show on Tuesdays and we've been doing it through Zoom. So we do have some time at the beginning if anybody does want to highlight their business and let the public know about it. Uh, just feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to give you those minutes or uh, time on WATD as well and our podcast. So uh, just feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. That was Sharon McNamara. Thank you so much. Um, Sarah Rizzitano from uh, Hannon Murphy, any final words? Um, I think I'm going to reiterate what everyone else had said, which is that this is a great town, and if we all kind of hang in there together, I think we'll get through this, whether it's in six months or I hope not a year. But I think we have a great group of people. The chamber is really supportive of every business in town. And I have to say the communication from Everyone from representatives to the Board of Health has been amazing, and I think it's it's. I think we're going to do okay. I think we're going to be good. Great, thank you. And let's go to um, Patty. Final words. Oh. Patty Dunnigan. Go I ahead. I know. I it's the it's that mute button. Um, <laughs> final word that I have to say is is stay positive. It's hard to it's hard to sometimes keep your head up and keep your smile on in these times where we have rioting going on, we have racial discrimination going on, we have COVID going on. You know, I mean, it's like a, it's like being on a roller coaster that's just constantly bumping up and down. And 
I think it's just important that we all just stay positive and positive about our businesses, positive about our town, positive about our friends. Thank you. Yep. Amen. Well said. Thank, thank you to that one. <laughs> um, let's go to Lisa Cullity. Final words, thoughts. Um, you know, it's easy in times like this to become discouraged. Uh, I think the town of Pembroke's government, all facets of it has made it very clear that we are here to help. Um, if you need help with something, reach out. Um, please understand that just like your own businesses, the, the town governments are a little bit handicapped by the volume of workload. We are a little bit uh, limited in, in staffing in other areas, so just be a little patient with us. Um, what used to be a one-hour turnaround might be a five-hour turnaround, and what used to be a day might be two. Um, but the town governments that I've spoken to, and certainly the, the one in Pembroke, is dedicated to helping businesses be successful. If you have questions, call or email. We'll get back to you. Um, but I do encourage everyone to use both the state website, which is actually amazing. Yes, I know it's so big. You have to kind of sort your way through it. But 90% of the information is there. And then the town, Pem town of Pembroke's website has hyperlinks that, that help kind of sort through some of all that for the more immediate needs. Um, thank you to you, Julie and PAC TV, for being so available to get this information out there. And thanks to the chamber for, for being so dedicated to help your, your members as well as help each other be successful. I, I think that's a really wonderful thing. It is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Jim, um, Jim can't, well, final words of advice to this group and um, from what you heard today? Julie, first of all, thank you to hear from all the business leaders just to see how well people are, are not only surviving through but thriving after the, this terrible crisis. And the, the thing I, to emphasize, I think what Patty was saying before is that uh, we it's the cosmic lottery to be born at this time in the world's history in this location in the world. And certainly we have incredible challenges now, but every generation has had a, a tremendous challenge uh, to our, our life in the United States. And we are going to come out of this a kinder, gentler uh, society. You. Thank you. That we, we are going to make sure that we're going to overcome. Um, I think the spirit that Kyle's showing rebounding from, from health issues. Kyle, it's so good to see you again. And we will give you, make sure, Julie, I'll, I'll give you uh, contacts uh, that we Lisa mentioned about the website, the state website. I can give you contacts for the SBA, the Patty as questions come up, uh, and for others that we would be able to reach out to the Small Business Administration. And clearly we'll give you uh, my information and a woman from my office who is doing all of the work well, with the SBA, Rakeb Abraham is her name. So, Julie, after uh, after hours, I'll just email that to you. Thank you for convening this. It was an honor to, to hear from folks, and I was really pleased to uh, get some additional information. And uh, Peter Brown, thanks for the invitation. And we're gonna we're gonna end the end this the show here with Peter Brown. Peter, you organized this. What are your takeaways from what you've learned today, and what and what's our next step as the chamber? Well, as as we've been learning through. This whole process is that we have to come back to the community. Um, all, nothing against the big box stuff or anything like that, but we've learned that during the shutdown that we've all relied on our neighbors, um, our friends, our close business associates, and we have to take that knowledge now, and specifically our local town officials who played their active through this whole process, and support them through the next phase of this. Uh, one of the things that concerns me is that the shortfalls that we're going to see in the local government and then the stuff that got shelved and has to, like, specifically what Andrew was talking about, the, you know, the revitalization of the center of town, small businesses as a whole, uh, our economic drive has all kind of stopped. So once we get out of this situation, we have to stop and look and regroup so that we don't slow down, so that the economy can rebound as it should. Um, we got to look at it. This is just as it's like a hurricane or something like that. We've we've shut down. We've come back. We've done the regroup. Uh, we can see there was a lot of pent up demand before this happened, and I think if we ride the wave and make sure we're prepared for it, if it comes around in November, uh, we should survive well. And just just to reiterate, I want to thank everyone that was on this call, Kyle. It's so good to see you. Um, I like to say <laughs> one of the things that people have to understand is the Pembroke Chamber is all volunteer. So any small businesses that would like to help out, uh, we're very affordable to be joined. We all back each other. Please reach out to Kyle and I and we'll get you situated. And Julie, um, PAC TV has just been a godsend. Um, all the information that we've been sharing through the chamber is because of you. And I appreciate everything you do. Oh, thank you, Peter. And it 
we, I'm thrilled. I mean, I'm a Pembroke resident. You all know that. And so I just, of course. And PAC TV is doing this for all our towns. This is what we can do. And we're so happy that we can. Peter, thank you for organizing this. We'll have another one moving forward. Um, Keep the faith, guys. Keep the faith. Uh, we're, we're getting through this. We have a wonderful town. We have a wonderful chamber. Kyle, bless you. We're so glad to see oh. that smiling face. Um, you well, can watch thank this. you for putting this all together. It was wonderful. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Any, anything we've done at all for Pembroke, if you go to pactv.org slash Pembroke, you'll see the meetings, you'll see the forums. I know Josh and Kathy have both done um, the forums on individual things. Uh, Kathy's done a lot about mental health during this uh, pandemic. So there's a lot of information out there. We, have a, we are blessed with a, with a wonderful local constituency of, of uh, legislators and of businesses, of course. So this is Julie Thompson for PAC-TV. Until next time, thank you and good day.